What's up family? Today we're gonna to talk about other people's money and business credit. I'm gonna go over this quick real estate scenario, hopefully it's quick, and we're gonna explain kind of like, you know, the differences, the benefits, the positives and the negatives of using your own cash uh, versus using other people's money. So a lot of people don't know what other people's money is. I'm gonna give you a brief overview of it. Other people's money is pretty much other people's money. It can be the bank's money, it can be loans, lines of credit, credit cards, business credit cards, you know, friends money, family money, you know, whatever money you have that you can use that's not for you is considered other people's money, which is OPM. You know, you might hear people say that or TBM, which is the bank's money. So today we're going to talk about OPM, which is, you know, going to be TBM really pretty much. But let's say you had $100,000. You worked hard. You saved money. Maybe you invested in some stocks or something like that. And you saved $100,000. But now you want to buy real estate with it because of the many different benefits of it. First of all, the consistent cash flow, the tax write-offs, you know, the appreciation, uh, you know, all of that stuff. And you got your $100,000 and you want to invest it. But you're not sure how to use other people's money. So this is a good scenario. With your $100,000 in my area, you can probably buy one house. This house can probably rent for, let's say, $900, $900 a month. So you bought it cash, you use your whole $100,000, you bought it cash, um, $900 a month is what you bring home. So you bring that home every month, and then, you know, you just gotta let this $900 build back up again. Now I'm gonna use my calculator real quick so we can see how long it take you to get your hundred thousand dollars back. Oof, nine years, nine and a, nine years and a quarter, pretty much. So it take you nine years off of this one property to get your hundred thousand dollars back if you only use your money. And the bad thing about that is you got insurance. You might have HOA depending on where it's at, which is homeowners association. These you got to pay these people to come clean up your property and stuff like that and clean the area. Um, and then you got the insurance, don't let nothing break down in there while you're renting it out because then, you know, it's gonna be a long time before you make your money back. Now, that's just using your own cash. You don't, now the upside of that is, you don't have a mortgage to worry about. Um, you don't have, when your tenants leave out, and I'm gonna show up and tell you why that's important before, uh, later on, but when your tenants leave out, you're not in a big hurry to put more people back in there. I mean, you, I'm sure you will be because you don't wanna take nine years to get your money back, but still, when your tenants leave, it's not really that big of a deal because you don't have a mortgage. Uh, and you're making $900 a month, which is not bad. You know, $900 a month, it's pretty bad. <laughs> but, you know, that's what you're getting. On the other side of it, the same $100,000 can actually buy you five houses if you utilize TBM or OPM, the bank's money, other people's money. With these $100,000 houses, if you use the bank's money, they might want you to put down 20%. So 20% of $100,000 is going to be... $20,000. So each one of these houses you pay $20,000 for, 20, 40, 60, 80, $100,000. Your whole $100,000 goes into these houses. It's really gonna be a little less than that because I didn't wanna get into all the technical stuff, but it's gonna be closing costs, you know, um, appraisals, all these other things, inspections, all these kind of things. So you're gonna have to pay for all of that stuff. But look, just for a general overview, because I know how y'all gonna do in the comments, y'all, y'all, I know. I'm going to be like, oh, you didn't talk about this and this and that. Look, this is just a real brief overview. I don't want to go into all of these details. This is not really a real estate seminar or real estate class. I just want to kind of briefly go over OPM, TBM, real estate, business credit. So look, don't get at me in the comments. But um, you can buy these five houses with the same $100,000 instead of this one house. Now, the downside to this is that you're going to have a mortgage on this. So with your mortgage, let's say you're getting... You know, same same scenario. You're gonna get nine hundred dollars a month in rent from each one of these houses, meaning you're gonna get around four to five hundred dollars a month in uh, overall cash flow. Now, I'm gonna tell you why this is important in a few uh, because you can get financing just based off of this. Now, your nine hundred dollars a month that you get for each property, you gotta pay your mortgage with now. Now, let's say your mortgage is $600 a month out of your 900. So, um, you know, $900 is your overall cash flow minus your $600 mortgage for each property. Now, we're gonna say that's mortgage, insurance, and all the other stuff too. So you're really gonna take home $300 a month per property. Now, 
three hundred dollars a month for this property is way less than nine hundred a month. But look, this is another good thing about it. Well, a lot of times when, first of all, you only put in twenty thousand dollars for each house. So let me bring out my handy dandy calculator one more time. So now we're looking at the returns a little different. With this one, it's going to take you at least nine years just to make your hundred thousand dollars back. With this one, you put in twenty thousand dollars to buy this one property. So if your cash flow is three hundred dollars a month, we're going to do twenty thousand dollars divided by three hundred, which will be sixty-six months to actually make your money back, which is five years. So you pretty much split this time in half because you use other people's money to buy this property. Now. This is going to cover your mortgage, your insurance. Uh, every single month, you're not going to have expenses, but you want to start saving money on the side for that. So out of this 300, you might want to save $100, $150 on the side for your expenses because something is going to break. Your tenants are going to break something. They're going to clog a toilet up or whatever it is. You know, they're going to mess it up. So you want to start saving money on the side for that. So the same scenario on this, you know, you're not getting 900 a month. You still have your insurance and your fees and all this other stuff, taxes per year. So you're really not making nine hundred dollars a month. The thing is, he's not really making a lot of money with one house. That's why any investor you know, a serious investor has multiple houses. You don't make money with one house. So first of all, I want you to get that out your head. If you're looking to get into real estate, do not go to buy one house and think that you're gonna make it. You're not gonna make it with one house. You're gonna get some good benefits, but you're not really gonna make money. So the num the money comes in the numbers. These five houses are gonna bring you more money than this one house. Uh, and you use the bank's money to do it. So now, let's show, let me tell you this. These five houses are each worth $100,000. So now you bought $500,000 in real estate with this same $100,000. Whereas th this property, you paid $100,000 and you own a $100,000 property. Now you have $500,000 that you own because you spent the same $100,000. So I hope that makes sense to you. You're gonna have while the tenants are paying down the mortgage on this property, you're gonna start getting equity in it and these properties are gonna appreciate in value. So when you buy it at $100,000, next year it might be worth 110, 105, 120. Now you have what's called equity in the property if you don't know uh, you know, a lot of real estate terms. So you're gonna have equity in these properties. You can use this equity to get more money to buy more real estate. You know, We're not gonna go into all of that, but this is the power of other people's money. Instead of you buying $100,000, with $100,000, you buy $500,000 with $100,000. So you just pretty much multiply your money just by using other people's money. And look, you're gonna make better returns by using other people's money. Now you're only putting down $20,000 per house. It's not, don't look at it like, uh, I paid $100,000 for this house. You really only pay $20,000 for each house. So that's what you need to look at. Now another thing, what I wanna tell you is business credit. Business credit is other people's money as well. With your business credit profile, you can get a counselor like Lowe's or Home Depot. So this $20,000 can actually be used off a credit card. If you don't have the cash, if you haven't built up the per, the, uh, the capital, but you have good credit or you can fix your credit and have good credit, you can get $100,000 in credit cards easily. You can get a $20,000 credit card, liquidate it, and buy your property with that credit card. So you really don't even have to save the money anymore. Now we're going to eliminate this need for saving money because a lot of people don't have the money. You know, jobs don't pay you enough for you to really make enough to leave the job. So what you're gonna have to do is find some creative ways. Either you're gonna have to work your job and then work a side job, start a business, or you gotta get this, you know, some other sources of income coming in, whether that be investing or just fixing your credit. But once you fix your credit and you got these credit cards, you can use these credit cards to buy a house. So now you're not even using your money. And let's say you got $100,000 saved, you keep your $100,000 saved and use your credit card to buy your property. Now look, you're buying your property with a credit card and then you have a Lowe's or a Home Depot business credit account that you use to fix up your property. So when you buy it, it might not be spick and span. You might need to change some flooring or something like that. Instead of using out of your $100,000, you could use a credit card or you can use your Lowe's and your Home Depot accounts that's going to fix up the property for you. And then you can pay your contractors with a credit card or you can use your capital. But now, instead of using your $100,000 to buy your property, or let's say you're $20,000, now you're using a credit card. So you just took zero money out of your pocket to buy that property. Uh, all your closing costs and everything can be paid with a credit card. There's different ways to do it. Reach out to me if you need to know because I can, I can definitely go over it with you. But now you took zero dollars out of pocket to purchase your property. 
and then you use your business credit to fix up your property. So your hundred thousand dollars stays in your pocket. Now you're using zero dollars to fix it up. How much did you pay to buy your, to buy your first property if it's your first one? You paid zero dollars so far. Now your contractor, if you don't have enough in credit cards, your contractor needs to get paid. So you might have to take that out of your hundred thousand dollars. So let's say to fix this property up, you're looking at paying twenty k. I know it's sideways, I know. But look, you bought your property for nothing. You bought the materials for nothing. You paid your contractor twenty thousand. You had a hundred thousand saved. Now you got a hundred thousand dollars in your pocket. And you bought this property, and it's making money now. You know, you got a rent, you got a pro, um, a mortgage on it. You got a tenant in it. You're making three hundred dollars a month, but you only paid twenty thousand dollars, and that's just to fix it up. How much equity would you have, um, you know, in that property in the long run? It's gonna the amount of money that you that you're saving is crazy because you're using creative strategies. Now, people say there's no such thing as 100% financing. I just showed you how it's possible. People do this with apartments, with houses every single day. So we're doing this strategy. We're gonna be looking to buy a 16 unit pretty soon. And this is what we're gonna be doing with it. We're not using our own capital. We're not gonna use our own money to buy this whole $600,000 property. We're gonna use the bank's money. We might put down 20%. We might use credit cards to do it. And then we come out of pocket nothing to buy a 16 unit apartment building with room to build six more units. So, uh, real, actually, it's room to build eight more units. But now let's talk about this this number right here, real quick. So, you got these five properties paying you about four to five hundred dollars a month. Which your if you have this set up correctly in your business bank account, you can potentially get financing just based off of this revenue, depending on who you go to. But my company is going to be. You need to have at least ten thousand dollars a month. But that's really possible when you see that you're leveraging. Actually, you can leverage credit cards to buy five houses. You can get $100,000 in credit cards and buy five houses with it. And then you're making $4,500 a month off of credit cards. You can use the houses to pay your credit cards back. So you don't use any money out of pocket. I hope you follow me with these strategies. But then, instead of buying your five, now you still have your $100,000 left. You can go and buy five more properties and bring in $9,000. You double this. So you're almost at the $10,000 mark. Or you can use the same hundred thousand dollars and buy apartment buildings which is going to be a uh, way better return for you so i'm gonna go over residential and commercial in another video and if i have it up together if i have it up already i'll put a link to it in the description below so make sure you look for that but commercial is way better than residential for a whole bunch of different reasons and that's pretty much all i got for you on this video look if y'all got some questions leave them down below in the comments if it's your first time here um, make, consider subscribing, uh, like this video, share this video if you think it was helpful. And remember, this was just an overview. Don't come after me in the comments. Uh, but my name is Richard Gilbo. I look forward to seeing you guys on the next video. Like I said, remember to leave some comments below. below. Check the description as well. Uh, get in my business Facebook group. Um, you know, reach out to me if you, need, if you have any questions. Reach out to me anytime. I'm always here to help.